what comes to mind when you think of a medical student? Probably some structured, organized, consistent, poor soul who has to learn absolutely everything there is to know about the human body and who won't shut up about it. Now, clearly some of these things are absolutely true, but as a fourth year medical student myself, I don't think I know anyone at this stage that hasn't become a disorganized mess. And yet, somehow, we still end up with all of this information in our brains. So how are we doing it? Today, I wanted to go through the ways that I believe as future doctors, we genuinely just study a lot better because of the ways that the systems are built around us rather than having some superhuman skill ourselves. So that if you are also a medic and you relate to these, we can hopefully lean into them a bit more together. And also, how's pharmacology treating you? <laughs> and if you are not a medic, then hopefully you can benefit from implementing some of these systems into your own study methods. I am definitely not yet licensed to prescribe, but today I will be prescribing five ways that I think medics just study a lot better. Let's get straight into it. The first is what I call the flood and retreat titration. And this is how I was taught absolutely everything in medicine. It definitely feels like torture and it takes a while to get used to, but it's so, so worth it. Basically, this is the view that in medicine, instead of learning things in small bite chunks and learning them step by step or incrementally, we are actually flooded in one go with information. And then this information retreats and we are kind of allowed to apply it. So when I was in my first year of medical school, I would come home every day from lectures with hundreds of new words that I had never seen before. So many new concepts, an amount of information that was absolutely insane. And I felt like I would never never be able to wrap my head around it. But what I realized was that this was definitely just still the flooding stage. In my university, I have one year of preclinical medicine, as opposed to two and three in most other universities. But this is where I learn all of the theoretical information. And in the rest of my four years, I am applying and reapplying it. So in the beginning, I am flooded and then I am kind of retreating. And this is so helpful. Although it's a huge shock to your ego to not understand so much and it feels as though you're never going to be able to grasp everything, actually, you're not expected to. You're just expected to hear it and be familiar with it. And then you will learn it when and it comes up practically or when you decide to study it later or when your brain is actually ready to grasp everything else that is needed for you to make that connection. But this flooding stage actually gives you with a huge amount of perspective and understanding on the topic as a whole and therefore allows you to collect things later and understand things in a way that is so much more effective. So as opposed to the way that I studied in high school, which was one chapter, then the next, then the next. Whenever I'm learning something new now, what I do instead is that I give myself an hour or a day or a week, depending on how big the topic is, and completely flood myself with advanced things and everything I'm supposed to know in this topic, not expecting myself to actually retain all of this information. Then I go in my retreat stage where I'm learning things step by step or the way that they are given to me. And now these things sit a lot better in my mind and memory and I have a much better framework of how to understand things in general. The second thing I think is incredible in medical learning is Feynman's clinical test. And you might have heard of the Feynman technique. Everyone in education I think has, so I'm not going to go into it in depth. But Feynman, great physicist, great lecturer, said that you should explain things to children if you want to know if you've understood them properly, which is a great test to do. However, this is inherently built into the structure of medicine. I absolutely have to use this technique, both when I first started and now that I am much more advanced. When I started, I would read a sentence and out of 25 words, 20 would be new words to me and nothing would make sense. So I would have to kind of break it down and explain it to myself when I didn't understand anything. And now that I'm kind of older and I understand a lot of the jargon and understand the things myself, automatically I have to think, wait, I need to explain this to a patient. How would I do that? I realize that I do this for everything that I learn in medicine because no matter how much you want to keep it at a high level yourself, you're going to have to explain it to someone at some point. And in medicine, we are are faced with people of different ages, of different disabilities, different levels of consciousness, different languages, and we face so many barriers in trying to explain what we want or what the patient needs in a way that we have to get very creative with breaking it down to various levels of 
difficulty. Therefore, having to convert our language in a way that's understood by everyone every single day, eventually it's properly understood by us ourselves. And this is so amazing. This is a huge problem I find in technical subjects where if you are always studying or working with engineers or people at your level, you can get away by always using this complicated language. But by keeping things at such a high level, you're probably missing out on really establishing the basics in a way that would help you apply them even better. So I really would recommend not relying on the complicated words and the complicated language that you've learned, but trying to convert things in a way that you would have understood five or 10 years ago, or that your customer or that your patient or that your grandma might understand a lot better. And using this every time that you're learning something, especially when it's complicated, will help you establish it in a much healthier and a much more effective way. The third thing that we benefit from in medicine, in my opinion, is malignant active recall. And I call it malignant because it is pervasive, it is invasive, it is away from its source, and it happens all the time in such an unavoidable way. Basically, active recall is the process of having to make yourself remember something from the past. And what it does is that it interrupts our forgetting curves, which naturally happen when we haven't been exposed to some information for a while. And in medicine, this is unavoidable. You might think that you're safe on a psychiatry placement, but the patient also has a hematological problem and you need to refer back to that information. Patients will ask you questions from whatever they need and not whatever topic that you are currently studying at the moment. And also we are faced with so many prompts for active recall in our everyday lives. As health is so pervasive and invasive, there are documentaries on health, there's news on health, you're having your peaceful Christmas dinner and definitely not trying to study and someone from your family asks you a medical question. So you are always prompted to use active recall. And I feel that the fact that we say that we are medics kind of helps us in a way because we are forced to recall things again and again and again. The other huge benefit to this and the reason why I call it malignant is that things are taken outside of their original context and therefore we become much better at grasping them. For example, when I was studying mathematics, the Pythagoras theorem for me is only connected to black ink and white paper on my textbook or in my exam. I would never Ever, ever use this anywhere else. But in medicine, when we learn things, they never belong to one specific place. We see something in a YouTube video, we read about it on Wikipedia, in a textbook, in one hospital, in another hospital, with different patients, with different family members, in a documentary, everywhere. Things are so detached from their original source that we realize that we actually grasp the information rather than having to rely on just a memory, which is a good way to connect something initially, but doesn't really mean that we have grasp of the thing ourselves. So I would really, really recommend if you are studying a different topic than medicine to kind of keep your ears perked for things that might prompt you in the world to use active recall on the things that you are interested. For example, if you are watching a movie or a documentary with an asteroid in it, thinking of the physics formulas of these sort of gravitational poles. So using real life active prompts for active recall rather than just depending on our scheduled studying is something that we benefit a lot from. And therefore we can, I think, get away with a bit less less scheduled formal studying in our personal lives at home or in the library. If you're a medic, it's almost like you're living in an exam all the time. It's not just an exam paper. So that tends to be very beneficial for our learning. Number four, and I'm going to try and explain this in a way that sounds healthy, is the amount of emotional damage that you get as a medical student. And some of this I agree with, some of it I don't. <laughs> for example, I think it's impossible to not have been traumatized by a consultant just kind of humiliating you for not knowing something complicated or basic when you are in a clinical setting. And I think we really set down the memories of that information that we are ashamed for not knowing or humiliated for not knowing. And I'm not going to condone this behavior. It's a great way to study, but I don't think we should use this. On the other hand, something that I think is a lot more valuable is that in medicine, there's a lot of emotional reserve for motivation for learning things. For example, there was a doctor teaching us and I noticed that when we were zoning out, the doctor always used a clinical scenario about a patient who had died because of a mistake that was made with the information that they were currently teaching us. And all of us, as students, we just perked up and started to pay attention again. And this is something that's used again and again in medicine. For almost everything that you learn, there's a case that someone did something wrong and therefore there were terrible consequences or death. And on the other hand, there's so many discoveries and everything that you learn kind of helped so many people and improved their life. So I think we can very easily rely on this huge emotional reserve to recharge us, which of course can be very emotionally draining, especially in the negative context, but it's something that I find, at least personally, really helps me study a lot 
is realizing the impact of the thing that I am doing. And I believe in many subjects, this is definitely something that can be relied on. In literature or in media or in history, we also see how the power of words has almost an equal impact on people's lives and whether they live or die. So tying the things that we are learning to something with a strong emotional impact gives us a huge motivation to study. We're very close to it in medicine, but I definitely think that these connections can be made in any sort of subject if we try a bit harder for some of them, but it's a huge, huge inspiration to learn a lot better. The fifth thing that we definitely benefit from in medicine is learning by osmosis. I've seen these memes of people saying that they just sleep with their books, hoping that the information gets into their heads by osmosis. And honestly, this is just what happens in medicine, actually, because I realized that there's so much that I know when I am required to regurgitate something. I genuinely don't know where this information has come from because I've never actively studied it, but it's just from being in hospital, seeing things here and there, that this information somehow finds its way into my brain. And this long exposure over time is a huge source of valuable information. I'm, for example, really surprised with sometimes people who watch Grey's Anatomy religiously will know some really niche and complicated things in medicine, which shock me. But this is really, really helpful because being in that environment as much as possible can help you grasp things even unconsciously. So in other subjects, I would get really creative by how much we can learn by osmosis. And this can be just putting ourselves in situations where important discussions are happening in practice about our topic, which can be a job or being an apprentice somewhere or reading your friend's papers instead of just reading your own. Which reading books or watching documentaries or watching TV shows on the topic can help you passively absorb a lot of things and extend the amount of time that you are actively spending on your subject. You might not get the benefit of having a five or six year degree as we do in medicine, but by spending more summers doing the things that you are going to do in your subject can help you in ways that are fun or very passive actually absorb a lot more information than you thought you were doing in the first place. As much as I obviously love and use YouTube as a creator myself, I realize that this platform has a lot of limitations a few of which I am very guilty of doing myself. In order for our videos to be shown to you on this platform, we need to stick to a lot of specific requirements and ways of packaging and delivering our content, which although they are hopefully ideal for reaching more people, they might not be ideal in terms of the type of learning that specific people need in order to get the most amount of information ever. In our attempt to get around this, Tiny Me and a bunch of other huge educational YouTube creators are using another platform in order to put a lot of our content and this is Nebula. Over on Nebula, there is no algorithm. So there are no restrictions in terms of how slowly or how fast we are delivering our content or how in depth we are going. Therefore, a huge part of the even YouTube content that I consume, I am doing over on Nebula. Not only that, but also there are exclusive documentaries and exclusive content that is found over there from these creators. And therefore it is massively, massively helpful. Also, there are no ads, there are no distractions. There is no weird recommendations that kind of take away from what I'm trying to do. So I find this to be such a clean way to get information. I just show up there, watch what I need to watch, and then leave. The best way to get access to Nebula is through Curiosity Stream, who are very kindly sponsoring this video, because the bundle of watching thousands and thousands of documentaries on Curiosity Stream and access to these videos on Nebula is only under $15 a year, which is absolutely ridiculous for the amount of value that is there. So if you are looking into some of these methods of priming or deep diving, or just being a bit more intentional with the things that you consume, I would definitely recommend Curiosity Stream which has thousands of documentaries on any sort of topic that you are interested in, but also trying to see if some of these big creators that you follow on YouTube or some of the more intentional and kind of educationally produced content can also be found earlier even and ad-free on Nebula. I have a series that I run exclusively over there where I go through in detail in very, very chatty conversations and style through books that I am reading and what are my main learning points, things that I love and hate about them, which you can follow if you are planning to read or planning to never read those books and kind of see the content that I consume, but they're also very highly produced videos on the platform. So I would definitely recommend having a look at both. There will be a link in my description, which will give you that crazy good discount. Hopefully some of these insights from my experience in medical school were helpful. I would love, love, love any questions that you have on teaching or learning that I might address in a future video. But otherwise, if you made it so far, thank you so much for spending this time with me. Be kind to yourself and others and don't believe everything you think. Thanks. Bye.